you don't mind standing up your feet, come on, lift up your voices. Bless the God of your salvation. Come on, open up your mouth and give a praise for the fact that you believe today is going to be a better day. And here's the thing. You may have no proof, no evidence right now that it's going to be better. But by faith, I dare you to testify to three people and say today is the best day of my life. You may have no money in the bank, but today is still the best day of my life. You may have enough opportunities in your home. Hey, but today is still the best day of my life. Don't know how I'm going to eat today, but I still declare by faith that today is going to be the best day of my life. Come on, clap your hands if you believe that. Come on, clap your hands if you believe that. Hallelujah. The best day of my life. post-biblical terms, meaning those terms did not exist in the time of the Bible. If you want to find us, you must look for the word Cush. C-U-S-H. I know they call we Cush, but before they call we Cush, Cush meant us. It means the burnt face, or Ethiopia. Ethiopia means burnt face. So the whole continent of Africa during biblical times was known as Ethiopia, or Cush or Libya, or Midian, or Egypt. So when you see those terms in the Bible, that's talking about you and me. Look at your name and say, that's talking about you and me. Yes, there were black people in the Bible, but that's not what I come to talk about today. We're in Psalms 113, we begin our reading at verse number one. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Praise the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The text, the text, verse number one. Praise the Lord. Praise only servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So far in the text, let us pray. Our Father and our God, bless this simple witness, charge it with your power, to when men and women may be healed, delivered, and set free. I thank you, God, that I am nothing without you. So I yield all that I am, all that I have, to your full disposal. Take my intellect, studies, experiences, passions, and struggles. Use them all to communicate your word with power, clarity, and elements in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Almighty God. This morning's lesson, my praise has a history. My praise has a history. When you look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, my praise has a history. Come on, clap your hands if you know your praise. Our text today 
comes from the book of Psalms, which in the original is Tehillim, which means a praise. The book of Psalms is a collection of prayers and poems and lyrics to music. In fact, the book of Psalms was the hymn book of Israel. Just like we have our hymn book here. When you're reading the book of Psalms, you are actually looking at the hymn book that ancient Israel used to sing. The book of Psalms is to help us to understand that God is the center of our lives. That we can do nothing successfully apart from putting God at the center. Do I have a witness here that can testify that the reason why your life is where it is today is because you made God first and you put him at the center. Out of the book of Psalms, we see a number of writers. The main contributor to the book of Psalms would be David. Uh, but in addition to David, you have Moses. You have some prayers from Moses. You have the sons of Korah and Asa, who were the ministers of music in the tabernacle, particularly of David. And as you look throughout the book of Psalms, you see a variety of Psalms, different categories of Psalms that speak to the different realities of life. There are Psalms for when you're going through difficult times. Uh, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You have those Psalms when you need to feel protected. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There are those Psalms where you want to give praise to God for his goodness. There are those Psalms where you want to thank him for his protection and guidance. For the Lord, he is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's all sorts of Psalms and you can find something that speaks to your current reality. This Psalms today is a part of a collection of Psalms from Psalms 113 to 118 known as the Hallel Psalms, H-A-L-L-E-L, -E -L, the Hallel Psalms or the Egyptian Psalms or the Passover Psalms. These were songs that are sang at the major holidays of Jewish people. There are at least three major festivals in Jewish religious life that they had to go to Jerusalem to the temple to worship. And when they got there, they were to sing these songs. One of the most important one would be the Passover. So in order to fully understand Psalms 113, I must talk about two important historical events. Y'all don't mind if I talk a little bit, do you? Two important events. I must share those and then we're going to slap the house on this foundation and praise the Lord. And so in order to understand Psalms 113, we must understand what the Passover is about. So in order to understand the Passover, we must go back to Genesis and talk about Joseph. Someone say Joseph. Joseph was the youngest son at the time of his birth to Jacob. But his brothers were jealous of him because of the favor that he had with his father, Jacob. So they came up with a scheme to get rid of him. But how many of you know that when you have favor on your life, you cannot be destroyed? Why should I got some help right there? There's some people who are jealous of you right now because you win and tell them, listen, I'm looking my back for I don't have time to go back and forth with you. I'm not going to do it. But there's some people who make it their business to try to block you, to try to stop you, to try to hinder you because the favor of God is upon your life. So they came up with this scheme and they sold him into slavery and he ended up in Egypt. He went from Potiphar's house, then Potiphar's wife accused him. He ended up in the prison. God raised him into the prison and he got in the prison and then he was recommended to the Pharaoh and now he becomes the prime minister of Egypt. Governing seven years of plenty, storing up enough so that when the seven years of famine came, they were able to survive. The whole world comes to Egypt because of the brilliant leadership of Joseph. But the Bible says in Exodus chapter 1 that there rose up a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. I got some Bible readers there, don't I? Ah, but that means is that he did not remember Joseph, but it means is that he no longer regarded it the relationship that was built between the Hebrews and the Egyptians. 
And the reason again is because they were jealous. I'm telling you, it's something about that nasty thing called jealousy. Have you ever dealt with somebody that's just jealous of you? You ain't did nothing to them. You try to be nice to them. Try to be try to speak to them, and it don't matter what you do, they're gonna still be jealous of you because God's hand is on your life. And when God's hand is on your life, He'll open doors for you that no man can close. He'll close doors that no man can open. He'll put you in places you don't qualify for. He'll give you promotions that you ain't even been on the job for a whole year. And he'll promote you two times in one year. And people that's been there for 20 years are scratching their head. Well, I wish I had some help in here today. I preach it better than you look at. It's okay. And so they are jealous of the Hebrews because they're a small group of people, but God has prospered them tremendously. They said, let's try to oppress these people. And if we oppress them, then maybe they'll lose their favor. But the Bible says that the more that the Egyptians tried to oppress the Hebrews, the more God prospered them. I came to tell about 20 people that's under the weight of oppression right now. People trying to block you, trying to sabotage you, telling lies on you, slandering your name to destroy your influence. God says, the more they oppress you, the more I'm going to bless you. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God says, you continue to do what I called you to do because the more they wait on you, the more I'm going to prosper you. And so, after 440 years of slavery in Egypt, the children of Israel cried out to God. And the Bible says that God remembered the promise he made to their father Abraham. He told Abram hundreds of years ago, I'm going to bless you, Abram, and I'm going to make you a great people. But down the road, your people are going to be oppressed. But when I bring them out, I'm going to bring them out with great increase. When I bring them out, I'm going to bring them out with so much more than they had than when they went in. And the people opened their mouth to God. See, when you got a closed mouth, you're going to say bow. That's why some of y'all, the way you look this morning, you said hallelujah, the whole service. That's why you're oppressed. You're depressed. Don't know how you're going to live because you got a closed mouth. Ah, but when you keep your mouth open, when you keep your mouth open in the praise and keep a hallelujah in your mouth, and keep a, oh, I got some help over there. When you keep a thank you, Jesus, down in your spirit, and the devil can't keep you down for long. And they open up their mouth at the right time on the right day. And God says, oh, I remember the promise I made to Abraham. You've been in here long enough. Now it's time to deliver you out of Egypt. And God spoke to a man by the name of Moses who had ran away from Egypt because he murdered a man in Egypt. And he was in Africa. He was in Midian for 40 years. And God spoke to him out of the bush and says, I'm calling to you. Take off your sandals. For the ground that you stand on is holy ground. He says, I want you to go back to Egypt. I, 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 but, 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 but God, I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't go back to Egypt. Oh, I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I killed a man. God, I, can't, I, can't, I can't go back to Egypt, God. Don't you know that you know I ran from there? And God says, with your stuttering self, I, I don't care nothing about your stuttering. All I want you to do is say yes, Lord. And go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, and Moses obeyed the word of God. He went back to Egypt. He went to Pharaoh and said, I come in the name of I am that I am. And he told me to tell you to let my people go. I feel like preaching. He said, let my people go. But the Bible says that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Have you ever experienced obeying the word of God only for the thing that he asked you to pursue is turning against what God told you to do. It seems like an oxymoron. How could God tell me to tell Pharaoh to let the people go? And then he hardened his heart. And so it took 10 plagues to turn the heart of Pharaoh. And it was that 10th plague. All the other plagues were interesting. But it was that 10th one where God gave instruction to Moses to tell the children of Israel to go and get a spotless lamb. Go get a blemishless lamb. And I want you to sacrifice that lamb. Then I want you to take the blood from that lamb and put it on your doorpost. And at midnight, I'm going to release the death angel. And when he sees the blood, he will pass over your house. 
and your oldest son and your oldest livestock will not die. But if the angel don't see the blood, it's going to kill the firstborn child and livestock in every house. He don't see the blood. Well, oh, I know it's not community of Sunday, but don't I have at least 30 people that's thankful for the blood? Yeah. Jesus. The guy is sick, but I said, do I have 30 people that's thankful for the blood of Jesus covering us? Because even though we were not in Egypt, there's some things that the devil wanted to kill in our life. But because of the blood, he passed over. Oh, bless his high man. And so the angel came, he passed over the children of Israel. Pharaoh says, that's it, I've had enough. Y'all people got to go. You got to get them out of Egypt. And he sent them with great resources and riches, and they left. And so every year, God says, you have to celebrate this Passover. And when they start this celebration, they say, we were slaves in Egypt. But the Lord delivered us with a strong arm and a mighty deliverance. Every Passover, every, and not just Passover, but every Sabbath. When I was in Israel last year, when we went to Sabbath dinner, when they started the dinner, they said, we were slaves in Egypt. But God delivered us by a mighty hand and a strong deliverance. They never forget the fact that they were in a really good situation that turned bad. What do you do when you're in a really good marriage? And after 20 years, your husband say, I don't want you no more. What do you do when you're working a job and giving all you have and all of a sudden now your new supervisor is oppressing you and harassing you? What do you do when you're living in a great community, worth all your life to build this house and then the demographics begin to change? Your old neighbors have either died or moved somewhere else and now these other people moving in who don't respect property. Y'all don't want to help me here with that. What do you do when a good situation turns bad? I want you to know that even when good things turn bad, God is still there. And when we learn how to open your mouth up in praise and not in murmuring and complaining, God will deliver you out of things that turn bad. Come on, clap your hands and say thank you, Jesus. So every Passover, they celebrate and they would begin to sing these songs. But this song wasn't written until after the Babylonian captivity. The children of Israel were taken as captives to Babylon. Because of their disobedience, and particularly one king, Hezekiah. Hezekiah made a grave mistake. And God sent a word saying, because you did this, Hezekiah. I gave you 15 years of your life and you still made this mistake. I'm going to take your children to be captive in a foreign land. He said, let it be so. And truly God did what he said he would do. They're in Babylonian captivity. There are some things that we go through that is not our fault. There are some things we go through because of the decisions that other people have made. Now I know we may not want to talk about it today, but if we be honest, there's some struggles we've had. There's some difficulties we've had because of the decisions that our parents made or our grandparents made or our siblings made or our spouses have made. There are some hard times we've had to endure, not because of the decisions that we have made, but because of the decisions of other people. But I'm here to tell you that even when you get in hard times because of the decisions that other people have made, God still has the power to deliver. Oh, I know I have some witnesses, some survivors, some overcomers in here today that can testify that I went through some stuff that I had nothing to do with, but I kept my hands in the master head. I refused to turn back. I refused to give up. And look at me today. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better than I've ever been. It tried to kill me, but it didn't work. It didn't work. And so when they came back from Babylon and they remembered the Passover, they gained strength from the story of their ancestors, just like we gained strength from the story of our ancestors, of how they endured slavery, how they made it through Jim Crow, and how they fought through civil rights. And if we tell the truth, we still fight today. Oh, don't get it twisted. Just if you live in your life's house, don't mean it's no struggle. Just because you drove your steak and naked over here, don't mean there ain't no trouble. We still in the fight. 
But we gain strength from the stories of those who came before us. And when they came back to Jerusalem and they saw that the temple was destroyed and their homes were burnt down and things that they always knew were no longer there, they, they begin to write the words to Psalms 113. And the first words out of their mouth was not, woe is me. The first word out of their mouth wasn't, this is messed up. The first words out of their mouth was not to charge God foolishly. But the first word out of their mouth in Psalms 113 was hallelujah. <laughs> you say, I don't see hallelujah in my Bible. It says, praise ye the Lord. That's King James. New King James says, praise the Lord. But if you look at that word in the original, that word in the original is hallelujah. I know y'all been saying hallelujah for 40 years, don't even know what it means. It's okay. I'm going to tell you today. I think it's amazing how they did not charge God foolishly because of their struggles. And I think that's a part of what has happened to black people. 40, 50 years ago, we would have never charged God foolishly for the struggle. And we were under heavier weight and oppression then. But what has happened to us now that we have gained access to higher education? What has happened to us now that the white folks let us move in their houses? They move into the city, we move into the suburbs. And y'all don't want to talk to me What have we done now that we're making more money? We can now have investments and we can now buy our vacation homes and we can go wherever we want to go. Now we have more stuff, but we have stopped praising God. A people that do not celebrate their struggle and honor their God for their struggle will be the people that will be oppressed again. And we can say what we want to say about other people, but every year they celebrate that we were slaves in Egypt. But the Lord delivered us. But we don't want to admit that we were slaves too. But the Lord delivered us as well. And I want to challenge you to never let your struggle make you stop praising God. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how dark it looks. I don't care how gloomy you may feel. God is still in the delivery business. God is still the deliverer. He is the hope of the poor. He is the God that will fight for his people. And if I can get 50 people to open their mouth right now and celebrate the fact that God is the deliverer, you want to open your mouth for this 30 seconds and give God praise for the fact that he is the deliverer. Praise the Lord. 
Right. Yeah. So you, all y'all, right. Hallel. The word Hallel means to boast, yes, to shine, yes, to rain. Yes, right. It means to act like a fool. Yes, right. People let us be foolish. The word that dance comes from the word Hallel. And what you can do, you can get you a little handkerchief, you can get you a little towel, you can get to wave it around in the air. You know why? Why they will wave the towels and things in the air is to say, God, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me right here. Right. But I need the blessing right here. Right. I need the healing. Yes, I need the blessing. I don't know if you need the fusion, yes, but the ones that ain't praying to the Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me. Have you ever been so desperate for a touch from God that you're like, God, I don't care what nobody thinks about me. I want him to know that it's me. Give me God praise. I can't, I can't sweat out my bundle so I can't praise the Lord. It took me 30 minutes to beat this face so I can't afford to sweat up in here. But I'm too cool for school. It took too long to pack this time so I can't mess up. Do you see how long it took me to put on this outfit? If you so concerned with the outfit, you already in trouble. Oh, I need some people that realize that my hair is not too good to praise God. My shoes are not so important to give God praise. My idol is not so important that I can't give God praise. When you don't care nothing about your image, nothing about your clothes or your title, but you say, God, I have to get a blessing from you today. If I don't hear from you, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I don't give you the touch of my body that God has gave up, I know that you're still a healer, and you can touch me right now in this service. Happy day, home. So the Hallel praise is not a sophisticated praise. Mm -hmm. no, don't get me wrong, I'm a sophisticated, so I know how to be sophisticated. Oh, yes. I know so how to be ratchet. Yeah. And there's some of y'all in here too, that's why you might say that you know, right. we're going to be really ratchet. We're going to So this is not a sophisticated praise. This is a let your hair down kind of praise. Right. I ain't saying you got to act like that all the time, but sometimes. Right. Every once in a while. Can I get a witness here? Every once in a while, you need to let your hair down and just give God a but, but, but this is why they're acting like this. This is why they are halaling. They are halaling John. You see in your Bible, the Lord is an all caps Jehovah. Last time I was here, I talked a lot about the Lord. Let me tell you again, just to remind you. They're praising God like this because it is Jehovah's job to make promises and make agreements with his people. And if he makes promises and make agreements with his people, it is then his obligation yes, to fulfill yes, what he has promised yes, to you. Yes, but that's good news today. Yes, because some of us are sitting in here with promises from God, and we don't know how that thing is going to come to pass. Do I have anybody here today that say, God has made me some promises that I just don't know how it's going to happen. It seems impossible. I, you know, I trust God and I believe Him. But if I go based upon what I see, nothing seems to line up. Nothing seems to come together. But something in my spirit won't let me let go of what God has promised for me. And because of that, I have to give Him a crazy break. Tell your secret. Sometimes the weight of what you're going through, coupled with waiting for God to do what He says in the midst of difficult situations, can weigh you down so bad you feel depressed. You feel despondent. You just disoriented. Have you ever woke up and you don't even know what day it is? All right. All right. You don't even know where you are because the weight of life is so heavy. Let me tell you, when you learn how to praise God, it'll help you keep your mind. I just gave you a good secret right there. Sometimes life is so hard, it makes you want to lose your mind, makes you want to give up. But if you can open up your mouth and say, God, it'll help you keep your mind. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I know I look like a baby, but I'm much older than I look. There's been some days I have to just go in the bathroom and holler and praise that God's trying to lose my job. So you're acting like this 
Because God has made you some promises. And it's not that you feel like you forgot because he don't forget. But you are letting him know that God, I'm going to praise you as a sign that I still trust you. I'm going to praise you as a sign that I know that at the appointed time, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. And so when you look at this hallelujah praise in Psalms 113, you recognize that it's not just acting crazy. I'm not telling you to just act crazy for the sake of being crazy. I'm saying you're praising God because there's a history attached to the praise. These people have a right to say hallelujah. But they were slaves in Egypt, but God brought them out. They were captives in Babylon, lost everything, but God brought them back and gave them double for their trouble. And I believe I'm talking to some people today that can testify that when I give God praise, I'm not giving God praise so you can look at me. I'm not giving God praise so that I can be seen. Right. I'm not giving God praise to disturb your little service. Right. But when I open my mouth to say thank you, Jesus, thank it's because God has brought me from a mighty Lord. Yeah. Right? When I open my mouth to say glory, hallelujah, yeah. I'm doing it because I shouldn't even be here today. Yeah. And doctors gave up on me, but God gave me another chance. Yeah. Right? And I say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's not to be unsophisticated or undignified, but I'm doing it because I begin to think of the goodness of yes, Jesus yes, and all that he has done for me. Yes, and when my mind gets to ruminating, when my mind is to working, I can't help but throw my hand up. And by the time I throw in my hand, my mouth opens and I can't help but say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I was a kid, I was I used to watch certain people praise God. I'm like, why is she doing all that? <laughs> she just putting on. <laughs> so one day I asked one of the old women, I said, Father, why you be acting up like that? You can't just sit in the service. You can't, we can't, we, we here late because of you. <laughs> so church, I grew up, if you didn't leave, it's what got to happen. You have to look at what got to happen. She said, baby, you just keep on living. <laughs> she's, not, she's not telling me about the old speaker. She's not telling me about the different stuff she had been through. Yes, How she had beat cancer three times. Yes, her. None of her kids never went to jail because she prayed for me. How she had to go through oppression by white people, trying to clean up white people's houses and things. Right. She had to go through the God kept them and, and allowed them to send the kids to school. And one went to the military. She said, I can't help but praise right. 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 Because my praise has the right. And I want to encourage you to never be ashamed of the history that surrounds you. Amen. All right. All right. People can roll their eyes to all you want. I don't think right. nothing about what people got to say Amen. about our prayers. Right. You can be big box. Right. But many of us, especially modern day black Christians, we have become ashamed of praise. Because praise doesn't match our upward mobility. That's right. But we wouldn't be where we are now if it wasn't for God. Glory. 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 You know, I, when people see me and they hear messages on praise, they assume that, you know, maybe I might have education or I'm a blue collar worker. You know, God has taken me all around the world. I've gone to two Ivy League institutions. Mm. I have an earned doctor's degree, getting ready to get an honorary doctor's degree, and just got accepted into a PhD program. Mm. With all of that education, I still got enough sense to know that he deserves my craziness. Mm. I just want to say that, not to brag on myself, but sometimes we feel like when you get to certain places in life, it's not becoming mm. to be expressive mm. in your praise. Yes. Yeah. Or we associate expressive praises with certain churches. Yeah. But the Bible, yeah. 
says that everything that has And that word there is the Hallel too. So Hallel joy. To that crazy. For the one who makes promises and keeps his promises. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.